Hello guys, thank you all for joining me as I start up a Let's Play series on Farming Simulator 15. My name is Blue Star, and again, thanks for joining me. Let's jump right in here and start a new career here. Um, I've chosen of the maps that's going to be available on, that I'm going to be playing on hard difficulty. I'm going to be playing the Westbridge Hills map right here. Um, I did understand that this map did come out back in 2013 on that version of the game, and as all they did is redid it for the uh, Simulator 15 map, but I never had a chance to play it, so I figured I'd bring you along as I check out the, this map. Um, I am playing using course play. Uh, as you quickly saw it scan and load in the background there. Um, so we'll we'll get into that a little bit later. Let's take a look at uh, what uh, farm equipment we get to start here with. Looks like we get to start with I believe this is the Ditzfar. Yes, it is. Looks like we have two Ditzfars and a Hurley man. As we jump across here, that is a Hurley man. Um, different types of equipment. Looks like we got a couple front weights, cultivator, a cedar, a tipper trailer. We got a Sampo combine right here. Um, which tractor is this? The her, at least how you pronounce that, and another Hurley man. So it looks like we get to start the map with five different tractors um, and a combine. Uh, so let's go ahead and get our combine up and going because it was already here in front of field 16. Looks like it's already ready to harvest. So we'll go ahead and we'll just hire a worker, get him started here. Oops, um, why is he not working? Oh, that's right, I have to unfold the Harvester. There we go. Now I should be able to hire a worker. And there he goes. Um, like I mentioned, I am using course play here. Uh, so it'll make this easier as we're touring the map and taking a look at some things. I'll go ahead and get this Hurleyman set up here with the tipper. And by using course play, I will be able to program in a route and have this guy automatically, um, you know, keep the harvester empty for me and offload into our silo. So let's go ahead and build a route for him real quick. Uh, starting about right here should be fine. Uh, this is going to be a come by empty route. Uh, let's lower our default speed here. Drop it down to about 12. I like to, when I'm programming, if I know I'm going to have to make a turn, to pretty slow down the route um, just before I have to make the turn. So let's start recording and start driving the route. This one should be a pretty simple, straightforward route. Just right up to the silo, make a circle around and go right back out to um, where our field is. Here's where I'll use, because I'm in the turn, I'll use the slow down speed of 13. As we straighten back out, I'll speed back up a little bit. Come back over. Slow down a little bit, and I want to make sure I get in front of this tree right about there in my route. And we'll go ahead and save this one real quick. Uh, this is field 16. Harvest. Okay, now because I did not put the route in the field, I'll want to go ahead and open course play here um, and tell it which harvester I want it to watch. That way um, it'll communicate with that harvester when it's time to go. Uh, drive course is fine, waiting until fill levels reach. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I believe it's settings and it's path finding setting. Um, real quick what this path finding setting does is if it's active here, if the driver side of the harvester 
is uh, where the pipe will extend over the wheat field. It will not drive out there. That's if for those of you who are playing with the weather, the wither effect on. Um, it'll start stop the tractor from just driving through the middle of the field because I'm not playing with the tire wither effect on, so my tractor will not destroy the field. I'm gonna go ahead and just turn that off. Um, and the other thing I like to do because I know this is such a small tipper, and that is the starting combine and its uh, max cap capability of grain it can hold before it reaches max capacity is um, pretty low. I'm going to try to keep him empty as much as possible. Hopefully he'll make this turn here. And our timing wasn't too bad. One thing I am saying is I'm going to go back over here to the combine itself. If I can find it, just a second. Um, as you can see, uh, salt straw swath is on right now. That's why he's leaving that uh, straw on the ground. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn that off real quick. Mainly because um, there's not a real need for it. I uh, actually have to stop the hired hand for a second here to disable it. And there, you, there it goes right there. As you can see, by turning it off, it's now just going to destroy the straw and not leave it in the middle of the field. Um, it, it doesn't really matter one way or the other whether you leave it on or off. You do want it left on if you're going to be bailing it because I don't have the equipment right now to bail it. Uh, there's no need for me to hang on to it at this time. So, let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of our farm here real quick. Um, where are we at? The bear herd is down here near our cow pasture. So we'll use them to just take a quick look at the southern side, of the, the south side of the map here. Um, cow pasture is over here. This looks like our BGA plant. It's going to be down here on the south side also. Just a real quick run through. Typical B BGA setup, four different um, silo pits here for maturing the grass. Weight scales that are actually working. Tractor weighs 4,025 pounds. Is that what I'm seeing? 25, 26. We'll see if we can in a future episode bring a trailer across there and see if it actually adjusts the ways according to what's on or in the trailer. Field 19 looks like we have a egg cell location we just passed. Somewhere around this little red farmhouse here. Yep, there it is. It's right there on the front porch. Going along. This is one of our cell locations. Which one is this? They're calling this the restaurant. It's got a little ATM machine beside it. If we need to borrow or pay off part of our loan to the bank. This should be our biomass heating facility. This is where we're going to sell our wood chips. Continuing along, and our lumber mill. This is one of the new features with Farming Simulator 15. Um, the capability to buy some forestry equipment, cut down some of these trees we do and do not want any longer and then bring it over here and sell the logs. Uh, looks like here on the outside of field number 13 we got a little bit of a storage facility here. The place a couple of our tractors. 
Save some time. I'm going to cut across the field here. I think this is going to be our dairy farm straight ahead that we're looking at now. For our milk truck that's going to run down to our cow pasture when we get some cows and bring the milk back to the little dairy station here. There's the entrance gate. We can get in right there. Supreme Milk. Just to the north of it, looks like we have um, this supposed to be a drive in. Yeah, looks like a drive in movie theater. That's kind of cool. Those are far and rare now. Most people prefer to go to the Cinemax where they have the better 3D and the new Ford. Uh, the movies coming out and sit in the air conditioning. Looks like our grain shop, our our shop's going to be right there on top of that hill. Have the train station and looks like the little village down here. train station dump point right there cut across field 5 right here to shoot through our little fa uh, farm town here hmm. might be able to store a small tractor in there nice little town people walking around another ATM over there well oh, looks like a cool interesting statue so we can take a quick look at it real quick. Excuse us folks, I'm bringing a big tractor through. Interesting. Kind of cool little statue there. Old, old school type cannon, couple of them. Nice little peaceful town. What else do we have to go explore here? Uh, I think I see a baseball diamond up there. Just to our northeast a little bit. Get out of town here. Little gas gas tank right station right there in the middle of town. Our sun's still rising for the day. Speed limit of 55. Wow. I don't think any of these tractors can quite do 55 mile an hour. Yep. A little baseball park. West, West Bridge Hills baseball team. Cool. What else we got to check out here? Looks like we have the garden center coming up here shortly. Oops, no traffic accidents. Our little garden center. I believe if we want to get into forestation, um, that we can, you know, buy and plant new trees. This is where we have to come to get our trees. It's from the garden center. A 
this is the warehouse. Take a look back behind it. American flag waving in the air, old glory. Looks like we have the flour mill straight ahead of us. Um, and just past it, it's going to be our sheep pasture. Okay, that just loops around on the north side of the mill itself. Our, mi our mill location here. Now, s I've heard some of these trains are supposed to be able to be sent on after you've delivered your, delivered your cargo. I think that's more than, more than likely going to be the train station, not here over at the flour mill, because I'm not seeing the lever. Take a quick look around, make sure I'm not mistaken. No, I'm not seeing a, a trip lever. He's still working decently. Continue our tour around here. Um, yeah, sheep pasture should be coming up just south of here. If we follow this road here over the railroad tracks. Oh, this is where one of our Hurley men's was at. That we'll get quickly come over here and take a look. That should be the pallet location where the wool gets stacked up as the sheep's har are harvest or sheared. I believe is actually the term supposed to be used there. Uh, looks like up this hill here is where they have the diner. Ooh, I can hear the tractor bogging down. This this hill could actually be a, kind of a challenge when we're trying to drag a tipper up it. There's our diner location. Kind of actually stuck it, kind of back here in the midst of all these buildings. Uncle Pete's excellent diner. And I passed it over here. I didn't even notice it. Um, look back to it. I believe this is going to be our wool location cell point right up here. For when it's time to bring the pallets of wool that our sheep will produce. Yep, there's there it is, it's tucked in here between the buildings. Do we have a sign on one of these buildings? No. What else do we have to tour? Um, I think that's the loop around the middle. We just we can actually go back and look at the farm itself. You know, more details of our actual home farm. Looks like coming down the hill, we can see here that um, we got a little red house out back where our field's currently being harvested.
Red House and Red Barn. Cut across field 17 here. Old Glory waving in the air there in front of the, the farmhouse. That should be our chicken coop location right there that's coming into view. So that is our three animal types, the chickens, the cows, and the sheep. Old one barn, couple of them here. That looks like that's where we can sell our excess straw and um, grass shavings as we get into the, that part of the farming business. Smaller little red barn right here. Back in behind. These should be our sugar beet and potato output ports. Um, they're actually in the shed, not in the actual silos. Um, see if I can actually zoom in here a little bit on this one. I think this is sugar beets here, and this other one should be potatoes. The third slot that actually doesn't have an output um, conveyor belt is, I believe, for our wood chips. If we get into buying the equipment and want to actually chip the logs up into wood chips, we can do that and then take them over and sell them at the biomass. See how these guys are doing. Looks like he's almost halfway finished harvesting this field. Just steadily going back and forth. There are a few mods that I'm running. Most of you have probably seen a few of them. Um, first is obviously course play that my currently have that Hurleyman program to do. Um, makes it a little bit easier instead of me having to sit and babysit the harvester. Um, he can do that, which gave me the ability to run around tour and take a look at the map real quick, and I'd have to, you know, keep jumping back. Um, the other one is if you notice underneath my control panel or controls screen in the upper left corner. That um, writing you see there where it says Hurleyman H88 uh, wheat 31%, um, that is actually in the inspector mod. Um, it's a great tool to use if you're not going to be using course player or you're not sure what's going on what with what piece of equipment, if they're still working, not working. Um, it quickly reveals which piece of equipment you are in or not in um, and you know the percentage level. So. Quickly, I can tell you, you know, the Hurleyman with his tipper, he's 31% full of wheat. The Sampo um, C6 has also got wheat in him because he's harvesting. He's currently 47% full. Um, and then, obviously, that third one is, depending on which piece of equipment I'm in, um, it will not show every piece of equipment, only the equipment that is currently working. So if you have an idle vehicle not being used, it does not fill up the list, but every piece of equipment that is working is shown and it does show you the name of who's in it. Um, that mod also does work if you're playing multiplayer. Um, it'll tell you who's in what piece of equipment. Quick simple. Take a look at our course play driver here. Now one thing that I'm going to do is, as you can see, I've got the the one Hurley man and the uh, combine going right now, um, is decide how much of this equipment here I need to keep or don't need to keep. Because by playing on hard mode, um, you are paying um, for each piece of equipment you do have, whether you're using them or not. So one thing I like to do is, if I have a piece of equipment that I'm not going to be using, um, especially at the start of the game, uh, I'm going to go ahead and you know sell it off, get rid of it, um, and I'll show you how I'm going to make that decision here real quick. I'm looking at my tractors here because I have a total of five tractors right now, which are the combination of these uh, three styles right here. I've got two Hurley Men's, two of the Ditzes, and one of the Burhers. As you can see here along the bottom, the Hurley Men's, I'm paying $270 a day for this tractor. Um, so if you're not using it and you're not going to be using it for a while, go ahead and make the decision to sell it, get a little bit of money back, and quit paying this maintenance fee daily. Um, that's going to really hurt your income. 
Same way you can see here on the Ditz Fars, I'm paying $460 a day, and then the Burr is costing me $330 a day. The other thing that's being revealed is right here is the max power. How much power each of that tractor produces. So the Burr here only puts out a 135. The Ditz is a little bit better at 143. And then the Hurleyman here, ouch, he's only 90 horsepower. Um, so if you're not going to be using any of this equipment real soon, uh, making the decision to get rid of um, to save money and not paying this maintenance fee. I think it's kind of one of the biggest things a lot of people need to know about when you first start off this game. Um, the other thing is is knowing your other equipment over here, what it can and can't do. For instance, this is the cedar we have. We own one. It's costing us $50 a day. And it can plant looks like everything but potatoes itself. Um, does require a 100 horsepower tractor more to use, so actually our Hurleyman couldn't use the cedar. We have to use either our Dutzer or our Her to use the cedar currently. Um, but I have already looked through some of these stuff, and the Vander uh, Stag cedar here, you know, uh, we lost the ability to plant corn and sugar beet with it. Um, but if you notice its usage right here, with this sewing machine, you can sow fields additionally. You can so feels additionally this machine offers the possibility to direct seed directing, no previous cultivating or plowing necessarily. So we're using this plot plotting nature seeder, you know, it does have the two capabilities. You do have to cultivate the field before you can plant it. So you'd actually have to cultivate it, then come back with this to plant it. Where this guy, even though he's a little bit more on maintenance, he'll do it all in one pass but you do have to have a pretty strong tractor. Say it's recommending a 180 horsepower tractor to handle it. So that's gonna be one of the things I'm gonna look at real quick here is what all can I get rid of and can I get a tractor that's capable of producing 180 horsepower. That one will do 190. That one's only 160. Hmm, that one's 203 at $172. Make sure I got the numbers right here. Let me double check. Yes, it is 180 horsepower. So I think one of these Dutzes might be able to pull it off. Um, I'm actually going to experiment and try that. So let's get rid of some of the stuff that I'm not going to be needing. Let's see. Let's try to keep the, one of these ditzes right here. I'm back him out of here. I'm back him out of the way. Okay. Let's see if we can come up with the money we need to go ahead and get the better seed drill. If not, then we're going to have to pay the labor cost or do the work ourselves to actually cultivate that whole entire field um, and then come back and seed it a second run. Um, that's just double the work. If there's a way to go ahead and sell off some of this equipment and get the, the bigger seeder real quick, be able to do it um, in one path pass, um, I think it's a, a step in the right direction to help us get started real quick. And then we are selling some of this more equipment that we don't need, um, especially like this this tractor right here. This this tractor alone, this this far itself, is going to cost us um, $480 a day. So just getting it getting rid of it alone will actually pay for the cedar's maintenance cost. Let's actually put the weight down. We'll keep it for now. I believe the weights are one of the only things that you don't have to pay a daily maintenance fee for. We'll double check that real quick. Weights. Yeah, so as you can see there's no maintenance cost. So we have two of the little ones and that's all we have is two of the small weights. So go ahead and sell that real quick. That's a little over 30000 for the tractor, and then 9000 for the cedar. That's the bits we're wanting to keep. For 
able to, we'll go ahead and get rid of this cultivator here too, because we're not going to need to cultivate the fields. We'll leave that weight there for the dits to use. Or dutes. I think I keep mispronouncing that name. Whoa! And that's a sample of what happens without a uh, counter front weight on the tractor to hold the front tires down. The steering becomes a little wobbly and uncontrollable. Well, that's getting a little bit more for that tractor. How much more do we need for our cedar? Oh, 52,000. That was easy to get to. The other piece of equipment I know we're going to be needing is going to be one of these uh, fertilized sprayers here. So we'll go ahead and buy it real quick. I might have been able to uh, actually get a little bit better yield out of that, out of this field right here if I would have ran over here sooner. Um, and actually pre-sprayed the field. Let me actually see if I can still do that while it's still got a chance. Tractor, let's go. Pick up our sprayer right here. Quickly run down to field 16. So if we look real quick, um, the harvester's almost halfway done with this field. Um, we can open up our PDA as they call it. And so far we've just got about 8,500 um, inside of our silo right now, plus what the tractor is holding and trailer's holding, which is almost another full trailer load. Um, we'll go ahead and hire real quick, fertilize the rest of this field, which hopefully will double our yield for the remainder of this field. kind of hard to see. Oh, there it is. You can see a little bit of spray coming out barely. So, just about perfect on the lineup to go ahead and fertilize the rest of this field real quick. Um, the other one of the advances and changes that's happened with the changing from Farming Simulator 2013 to 15 has actually made hiring the fertilized driver right here part of the game. You used to actually have to do this manually or find a way to trick the system and make it part of your seeding tractor to have them go ahead and spray and seed in one path pass for you. So that's another small little implement that they did into the game to improve it. Okay so we did get two full trailers out of the first roughly half the field which is 8,500, so that's going to be 1,700 total by the time he offloads. And there, the, Sam, the Sambo did have a little bit extra 
more than that. So we'll see what we'll get for the rest of the other half of this field. Here's our other Hurley man, and do I keep him or not? He is cheapest of the tractors that I have. Actually, um, I don't think I'm going to keep him. I'll go ahead and get rid of him too. It's roughly another almost $100 a day I'm saving. So we'll run him up here and sell him real quick. Oh, there's our Harley man doing his little circle after offloading. Looks to be driving okay, not not spinning out. You heard me mention a, a little bit earlier when we were heading up to the diner about you know, the tractor like slowing down a little bit, climbing the hill. That is um, another feature with 15 is they did add more of a realistic feel that you know the tractor is going to be under a little bit more load climbing a hill um, to the point that if you actually you can put a, too big of a tipper on the back of one of these tractors and it doesn't have the power and will not be able to climb the hill. Um, so you need to we'll have to watch that, make sure we don't get too large of a tipper behind any of our equipment here. Go ahead and sell off this Hurley man here. Uh, before I do that I want to take a look and make sure I don't have any other equipment lying around that we're not going to be using. Um, that's the cedar, that's the weight we're going to be keeping, the tipper, the Hurley man that's being used. Okay, I might see any spare equipment, so we'll go ahead and sell this last Hurleyman. Now, as you can see, my inspector mod, it, is, it just turned yellow. That is because our combine is over 80% full, um, and hopefully the Hurleyman will be getting to him shortly to offload him. There he comes. That's just a pre-warning if you weren't using a course play route or something that, you know, hey... He's almost full. He's going to stop. Okay. Um, he's finished fertilizing the field for what's left of it. Go ahead and run over here and put our fertilizer down. Now the other advantage and one of the cool things about selling off that equipment the way I just did real quick is I can open up my finances tab right here and the game starts because we are on hard mode starts us off at $150,000 loan already taken out. We can go ahead right now and pay off some of that. That will reduce the interest at the end of the day, the loan interest right here that we have to pay, um, which is going to be a positive. less money we have to pay in interest the more money we get to keep okay we'll drop off our fertilizer right there Hurley man is in traffic that's the course play um, error log letting you know there's a problem stop, stop him right here move him out of the way and then and they'll continue working. Let's jog back on up here. Oh, I'm gonna drop this weight off. I just remember, remember that uh, first stitch we took up to sell. We took that our spare weight. We'll put our weight right here. That way we can bring them both back at the same time. Because I think our Hurley man does not have a weight on the front of him. So that'll be a weight for him to pick up here in a few minutes. Now I'm hoping this tractor really can handle this cedar. Remember it, it was wanting a 180 horsepower uh, tractor to pull it and I think this one's only rated at 143. So hopefully, without too many issues, it can actually handle it. As soon as we can get some more money and save up, we'll get a bigger tractor. That way we 
have the proper um, horsepower to pull it. Back up here and hook it up. And wheat right now at this field. We'll go ahead and plant barley next. Try to do some field crop rotation. Um, I don't think it's been proven yet whether or not that makes a difference or not. You know, if you rotate your crops um, or not. I do know in real life it would be important, but I think here in Farming Simulator it's not as necessary. So. This is the advantage of this cedar right here. We'll go ahead and hire a hand right here. And as you'll see, he's cultivating the land and seeding it all in one path. He's even pushing that straw right back into the earth, even though that would have been a little bit more money if we had a way to pick it up. But right now, we don't have a forging trailer or any billing technology. So, unfortunately, it's a little bit of waste right now since we can save up some money and start harvesting part of that and saving that'll actually be a little bit more of a boost you got plenty of room right there to turn around And with our cultivator being already over halfway done with the field, even though this tra uh, tractor is cultivating at a faster speed than the harvester is harvesting, um, I doubt he, he'll be able to fully catch up. He'll be able to cover more area faster, but with over half a field lead, I think we're a little bit safe. We'll just have to pay attention to make sure our Hurley man doesn't have a course problem and run into the ditz here um, every time he's having to go back and empty into the silo. And well, the dust made it to the top of the hill. You can see over there in the far corner. So, yeah, he's a little under, probably listed a little bit underpowered for that cedar, but looks like he's going to manage fine. He should be able to more than get this field um, harvested, I mean, re sown for us. And now you can really see our money's ticking down. We're having to pay for the hired hand to run this uh, cedar over there. We're paying a hired hand to um, run our cultivator here. Um, and if I set up course play correctly, um, I don't believe in, you know, cheating the system. I do have the, I did select the option of course play to you know, pay pay or charge out um, for the driver that's actually driving this Hurleyman right here. He's 100% full, so he should head back towards. There he goes. One thing I did notice about course play, and I'll show you, is if you look, he's not actually aiming at that first dot. He's actually aiming at that second dot. So when you're actually setting up a route, you want to make sure that second dot's got a clear line of sight view from wherever he may start his route to drive to it. Um, that is just a little bit of personal experience I found out playing playing with course play over a few years of playing Farming Simulator. Um, if you're going to use course play. Now one thing you can do is at any time you want to with course play is you can take control and stop the driver and then like I said take control of driving the tractor yourself and I'm mainly doing that because I just noticed my uh, cultivator was he's already over 80% full right now so if he reaches 100% he's going to stop and that hired hand will sit there and just charge me to sit there in that tractor even though he's not working. 94, 95, can we make it, can we make it, 96, made it, just barely. Now, I would start course play right now, but because he was on that route until he reaches the stop sign, 
he will not actually uh, do his route of coming out here to the harvester so I'm going to run and just hold, hold the best I can you know keep the tipper underneath the end of the pipe there draining Okay, get out of the way, and you'll see right here when I start it up, he's actually going to drive back towards the route. I'm going to actually help him out a little bit. Go ahead and put him over here near this part of the route, and he'll go ahead and There he goes. Sometimes you have to just st stick with him a little bit, make sure you don't have to, you know, realign him or help him out on his route. He should offload and go back and wait at the stop sign until the harvester needs him, which could be pretty quickly because the harvester is already over, already up to 30% full already. Cedar doing. Looks like he's doing okay. Oh, that's right. I'm not using course play. You can use course play and program the route that you want the harvester to uh, drive, and you actually use it instead of the hired hand. It's just a matter of preference and choice based on what you want to do. Um, I don't really see one advantage over the other. The only time I would really consider course play, um, you know, programming a course play route over the hired hand, is if you know you need it to make a turn and you're not sure the standard hired helper can handle the turn or the curve involved. Um, especially if you want it to do like a, I think they call it a, a headland, where they actually wrap around the field either before or after they do the lateral lines up and down the field. Um, that would be the one of the advantages I see of it, um, which could be a possibility here on this field 16, because you can see we have cars driving by here on the west side of the field. If we actually start having problems with our tractors or cultivators running into traffic problems and getting stuck because of the pedestrian cars that are driving, um, we may consider um, actually using course play to, you know, do, do a headland on this map for us. Um, another place that I actually already saw that it might come in handy is, as you can see, field 10, right there, just um, northwest of our farm and to the slightly east and north of the farm shop is you can see that little section that cuts out on field 10 right there is just having it you know do a wrap around just to that way it takes out that one little section um, field 18 as you can see it's got a couple little curves in it it's not just a perfect perfect rectangle field 1 4 3 13 14 there's actually quite a few fields that actually they're not just a square field um, and sometimes the basic hired hand helper going back and forth like this sometimes it's a non-issue and sometimes you may have an issue it just gives you another option to trying to ha handle that type of uh, issue if you have fields that are not perfectly square
that or if you wanted to offset you know how much it did or did not overlap He might catch up. I don't know. I forgot that his working with is wider. I think the harvester head on that um, combine over there is only like just a little over four meters, and the seating swath is right at six meters. So he is traveling at a greater speed, and he is covering more area faster because of his sewing area. If we have to, we'll just stop hiring our hand for a minute and have him take a break. Yeah, he does turn out the road just a little bit there, I saw. So we'll have to pay attention to make sure we're not having any traffic issues. The other thing that can be done is if you want to, you can trim the edge of the field a little bit. You know, I could run this guy, put him on the grass mode or something, and just barely run down that edge and shrink the field just a hair or a lane or two just to give us a gap between the edge of the field and the road. Because as you can see on this side, uh, we got a huge area for turning around over here. We're not even near the road or those trees to keep them out of the way. Um, we may have a problem with the windmill, the clothesline, and the farm building down there for some of the bigger equipment. We'll just pay attention to that for future usage of this field and bigger equipment as we obtain them. another trailer load. How are we doing? Let's check how much we have so far. We're up to 30,000 wheat so far plus this trailer load coming in. So we did, we are gaining more than our original by putting that, hurrying up and getting out in here and putting that fertilizer down. Um, because what did we get? We got what two trailers before we put the fertilizer down that we made it 1700. Um, and now we're over 30 and fixing to put another 85 in. So we are we we are getting more of our yield now. That's where the fertilizing of your field comes in handy and becomes more of a necessity. Just that way you definitely get more yield faster for each each harvest you have to do. We'll see how much we have as soon as he's done unloading here. So there we're up to 39 and we said 17. So that's an additional 22. So another 22,000. Um, and we're actually not even complete yet. So it's gonna probably be, if I'm right, close to almost doubles your yield. I think it's like 1.9 something if you actually do the math. That's what I've heard or read that someone else has posted. 
I know this episode's running a little long. I'm trying to get this one field harvested for y'all and see to that way we got it done on our very first game day. Already up to 82%. Where's our... There he comes. Hopefully there's not a collision. Oh, the dead stopped for him. Let him pass. Excuse me. Gonna be close. The Dutz, uh, we might just have just enough time to stay ahead of him and stay out of the way. Yeah, it looks like the cultivator needs maybe two, possibly three more swipes after this one. Just about done with this film. actually stop our driver here that way the uh, combine will go ahead and make his turn there try and get this done a little bit a little bit faster let him get coming back on this field there we go that will drive the route and it does look like the Harvester will have to make one more trip back to finish off the field. Go ahead and tell him to go ahead and drive now because he's not going to be able to hold what the harvester picks up. I will go ahead and empty the trailer and come back. I'm actually going to dismiss my hired hand here and do this last path pass myself. Save just a tad bit of money myself and that way if I have any problems with the, the cedar I can quickly get out of this way. There should be enough room for him to come back.
the Cedar should have one, maybe two more passes left after this. So he's he's going to be he's going to be completed just shortly behind the harvester here. So decent time in our our field work and harvesting and getting the field completed in a timely manner. There we go, that's done. We'll go ahead and extend our pipe out and drive over here for the tipper to offload on the remainder of the wheat. pipe in and then we can park our harvester here in the shed. one last pass for him. We'll go ahead and tell him to drive the course now. That way he'll put the last bit. I'll just do it myself. Go ahead and empty the wheat here into the, the silos. We'll see how much grand total we got off that field. So we're gonna get him through. We fit. Looky there, we barely made it in. As you can see, there the mirrors on the left and right of the tractor do work, but um, they're not the best alignment. So. At least he's out of the weather. Oops. And that's what I thought was going to happen is we did have a problem with the public traffic. Okay, he's done seating. We'll go put park him up. And we'll call uh, into this episode. Thank you guys for joining me. Um, episode 2, we'll go ahead and get this uh, field fertilized and speed up time here for the next harvest. Um, and then see about what else we can purchase and do to save some money. As you can see, we're almost broke. We're down to $656 left. So we d definitely need to be saving all the money we can. See if I can back this in here real quick before we go. And obviously, as you can see, I do have the dirt effect activated in the game because our cedar and this here is nasty yuck we may look at that may look into getting a washing machine uh, start cleaning up some of the stuff once we get out of the poor farm and not owing the bank as much as we do uh, get out and take a look at our equipment so guys again my name is blue star thank you for joining me um, playing farming simulator 15 um, Hope y'all enjoy. Please hit the like button, the subscribe button, um, and I'll try to keep producing more videos for you. Take care and thank you.